Okay, um, continuing with the history, but now we're up to about 1883, and there is a guy named Kirchhoff um, who writes a treatise on military uh, activity and, and gives uh, principles or laws of, of military activity. Uh, I, I suppose some military historians know what all of them are, but uh, generally uh, we only know one, and that is uh, has come to be known as Kirchhoff's Law or Kirchhoff's Principle. Um, it's not the only one he did, but um, it is uh, the one that we, particularly in information security, remember. He noted uh, that you cannot depend on the secrecy of the algorithm that you are using. Um, you... If, if you have thought of a way to hide information, somebody else is probably going to think of the same thing. And therefore, they're going to try it and they're going to figure out uh, the information that you've hidden. So, um, the, you cannot rely on the secrecy of the algorithm. It doesn't matter if uh, the algorithm is secret. If the algorithm is good, what you need to rely on is the secrecy of the key. This is why with symmetric algorithms, we need to um, exchange the key, agree uh, on the key beforehand, uh, exchange the key out of band, um, you know, all of this. Key management, uh, well, key management is key um, in in all of cryptography, uh, and and you know managing the key properly, transmitting the key properly, communicating, agreeing, whatever. Um, and asymmetric encryption is uh, a means, basically, of of communicating that key. But we'll we'll get to that. Um, the so symmetric algorithms. Um, we are not just, you, you can't uh, rely on, on the secrecy of the algorithm, and you shouldn't rely on the secrecy of the algorithm, um, but it's a, a fault, a problem, um, a failing, if you decide that you've found a secret algorithm and, and nobody else is going to be able to figure it out. Um, this is, uh, you are fooling yourself and you are degrading your own security by doing so. Um, so the, uh, the thing is, when, uh, it, it, it extends to more than just, uh, this, this one principle that we don't rely on the secrecy of the algorithm. It extends then to the fact that we have the algorithms, various algorithms, and the ones that we want to use are the ones that are known and have been looked at by other people. Because, uh, oh, there's, there's a number of quotes here. Um, uh, and I'm, I can't remember all the people who said them. Um, uh, no uh, false idea has more firmly gripped the minds of so many intelligent people than uh, the thought that if they really tried, they could create uh, an encryption algorithm that nobody could break. Um, and, and so many people have done that. So many people have tried to create uh, yeah, you know, their, their own crypto algorithm and thought they had a good idea. And it turns out, no, it wasn't a good idea. Um, so, uh, creating uh, an encryption algorithm is a definitely a non-trivial task. Uh, you are going to want to use the ones that have been tried and tested. Um, 
anybody who is is trying to sell you a crypto system and says, you know, we use our own algorithm. Nobody else knows what it is. It's secret. Therefore, it's more secure. No, it's less secure because it hasn't been tested. Um, as I mentioned, the, the Heglin machine, you know, um, wasn't that it hadn't been tested. The CIA tested it and found out that it was weak and they said, good, sell it to everybody. Um, they, uh, you know, but nobody else uh, had really looked at it, at least not solidly. So it's, it's a non-trivial task to create one. It's a non-trivial task to test one. So make sure you can find one that other people have tested and they know how strong it is. And as we go through uh, some of these other developments, uh, there are going to be um, various examples of how, uh, you know, people thought they had a really cool algorithm that, you know, really, you know, nobody was ever going to guess this and people guessed it. Uh, or there was a hole in it or, you know, whatever. So um, we'll, we'll look at that. But um, again, assume your adversary knows your algorithm. The, the adversary probably does. And, and certainly, you know, if we're, if we're going to use publicly available algorithms, uh, you know, the other side has people who have studied crypto too. Uh, they're they're going to know the algorithms that you use. Uh, pick a good one, pick a strong one, and protect your keys. That's the way uh, to manage it. Um, the... Uh, yeah, uh, the security of crypto is always in the details. Um, the um, we, well, you know, particularly when we get into asymmetric encryption and start talking about public key infrastructure, you're going to see that there's an awful lot of details, an awful lot of uh, things that you have to pay attention to and make sure that you do properly. Otherwise, uh, your system just isn't secure. So, um, we're, you know, going to have to pay attention to implementation details all over the place in, in cryptography and, and, yeah, manage it properly. But, you know, don't think, uh, you know, a secret algorithm is, is going to help you. It's not. Um, and it's yet another example uh, security by obscurity. Um, so, so many people have gotten into trouble because they figured, okay, you know, we, uh, nobody knows much about us, and so we're safe. No, uh, you know, people will find out. Security by obscurity does not work. So, uh, do it properly. Use proper tested algorithms and uh, do the, the implementation correctly. Uh, you know, secrecy is not your friend at this point. <laughs>